Welcome to another edition of Valor Mania Reviews, and unfortunately I'm here to review Monday Night Raw, which takes place today, which is June 5th, 2017. Um, I'm in a bit of a bad mood from the last night's show. I was not a fan of the pay-per-view last night. I was just, the booking on that show was terrible. They can't book baby faces. The baby face booking is just trash. Um, in particular, I'm still a little ticked off with how they treated Bailey, and now I'm reading that they're giving up on Bailey and they're basically they're basically blaming um they're basically blaming bailey for not getting over which is not true she was very over for a very long time she was very over um during her first run you know as champion when she first won the belt she got a huge pop up until the time she won the belt she was bucked well and now she's in the you know, she's in the dumps. You know, they've bucked her like shit. They've made her Alexa Bliss's little little bitch. You know, they have her losing her hometown, which was a terrible decision. Then, they decide to have her lose on Raw the next night. And then, she gets beat up by, with a kendo stick by Alexa. Gets beat up with another kendo stick by Alexa. Gets completely squashed on the pay-per-view. And don't... Oh, and almost not to forget... Had the worst segment... One of the worst segments in Raw history that really hurt her character a lot a lot of damage to her character so for them to take this out on bailey now i'm hearing you're giving nia Jax a title so yeah you know you're gonna punish bailey uh and you know have her get squashed on people for not getting over she was getting a big reaction for the last several months up until you fucking ruined her because of the booking she was always getting a pop now you're gonna give it to nia Jax. she doesn't get any fucking reaction you hear Nia Jax come out, it's fucking crickets. I remember when she came out at WrestleMania, you could hear nobody reacting. Bailey got a pop, Sasha got a pop, Charlotte got a pop, and Nia got nothing in that match. I still remember it, and they're giving her a title shot. That's nice logic. But some stuff the hell they're using Bailey. I'm going to fucking give up on her. They're fucking giving up on this girl. She has so much fucking potential. It's it's really annoying me. So I'm in a bad mood already after reading that news. Hopefully they do something with her. Hopefully they don't just take her off TV. But um, she has a lot of potential. And uh, I'm really annoyed at how they're how they've booked her. So just to go on that rant, I'm already in a bad mood. I hate Raw with a passion. I hate the Raw booking team. I think everyone should be fired. Um, the booking is terrible. So I'm have negative vibes going into the show and. Um, I am looking forward to see what they do with Brock and Joe. I don't know if Brock will be on the show. Probably not. But hopefully we get to see something with Joe. Maybe see, see Joe uh, interact with Heyman. So that's it for the preview. Let's see what they have for, for us tonight. And yes, if you remember, I have been turning off Raw the last few weeks. There's a hockey game on tonight. If the show gets really bad, really unbearable, I'm just going to change the channel. So here's your warning. So Bray comes out to open Raw. He starts going off how people are guilty that he lost. And then he singles out Reigns at the end. Um, looks like they're gonna have a match tonight. Rain just came out, so I want to change the channel already when I see that fucker's face. So, uh, they're just pissing on Bray Wyatt's grave right now. They need to send him back to SmackDown. That's where he really did very well in SmackDown. Um, he lost to Reigns again. They had a really good match, but, I mean, this character is completely dead. I, I, right when I saw Reigns hit the speeder, I immediately changed the channel to hockey game. And, uh, I'm gonna wait a few minutes to see what else is on there, because, um, I'm already in a bad mood after that um they once again you know they once again tease enzo and cast they show him backstage they're facing gallows and anderson later tonight and uh by the way i also thought charlie caruso looked amazing she is just she's the hottest interviewer they have in the whole company now they're talking about the women's championship Ugh, i don't want to relive that fucking match again and we'll see what happens now hope we're not have to see alexa and naya next so uh, they, they uh, Alexa was backstage at Kurt, and they even they poked fun at the last week's segment. You know, they even had Kurt Angle say that was one of the worst segments in WWE history. So they they obviously knew they fucked up. Um, Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax is the feud, and they are having a match tonight. Saw a random uh, Miz and Ambrose promo. Immediately changed the channel. Do not give a fuck about this rivalry. This rivalry has been one of the worst rivalries they've had in a while. I don't give a shit. Really got to hand it to WWE. Um, first of all, before I get to the big segment, they had another thing with Dean Ambrose and, you know, Kurt Angle ordered him out of the building. That, that sucked, but we just had an incredible segment on Raw. Um, Samoa Joe comes out, he cuts a promo, I didn't really care for it too much as he's envious of Brock. Uh, Paul comes out and Paul cuts a great promo, you know, really hyping up Joe, really selling Joe as his biggest threat. He's afraid of Joe. He kind of, you know, talked about Balor a bit. 
and saying Balor is kind of an underdog. He doesn't really take Balor seriously. So obviously, I really think they're going to do Brock and Balor maybe at Survivor Series or SummerSlam. That will happen, but he's really selling Joe. Um, he's doing a great job, and then uh, it was a really good segment. And after that, Joe, he puts the mic down, backs Paul into the corner and talks him, and then he chokes Paul Heyman unconscious. And this got a lot of heat. It was one of those things. You know, people kind of don't like Paul, but like, they got the fans got pissed off. This put so much heat on Joe. And Joe, I think, is the heel. And I think Brock's the face. Joe's the heel. This is such a shame that they are doing this segment right now and not for SummerSlam. This should, this should be the main event of SummerSlam. That was fucking awesome. That was an awesome segment. So as much as I've been a little bit very negative on Raw, that, that segment was fucking incredible. So Rollins and Joe's uh, announcer earlier tonight, they did a stare down. They had a confrontation with Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, uh, kind of a throwback to their TNA days. So they kind of hinted maybe that's in the future. That'd be cool if they do that. Um, but I got Rollins and Joe in the main event. So that should be a good main event. Um, they had Cesaro and Sheamus squash. Uh, Heath Slater and Rhino don't really care about that. We'll see if they start to tease the broken hearties. I don't know if they're going to be on this show. Cruiser rates equal press break. So, um, they, uh, they, stupid, I don't give a shit, the cruiser rates. Uh, they hyped up Alexa and Nia, so hopefully Nia doesn't try, almost paralyze Alexa like she almost did to Charlotte a few weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, you know, I still haven't really forgiven Nia, she almost killed Charlotte in that match a couple of times, so hopefully she's a bit safer with Alexa. Alexa's a lot smaller than Charlotte, so hopefully, uh, yeah. A little bit concerned for Alexis while being here. Okay, so we had a few segments um, to run through them. They cut an old school Goldust kind of promo. He did like, you know, the early 1995, 1996 Goldust kind of promo. Obviously, he can't be that same character he was, but it was a kind of a cool throwback. I still like it. I really give Dustin Runnels a uh, tremendous amount of credit for making this character just last so long. And it's staying power. It's really, really remarkable. And Goldust really doesn't get enough credit as much as he really should for the staying power of that kind of a character. Um, then uh, they did a woman's backstage segment. They showed Sasha, Dana, and I think Mickey talking backstage. Alexa comes, Sasha, immediately as she sees her, she walks off. So then it leaves Alexa with uh, the other two. And she tries to form some kind of unity. It's against Nia Jax, And they say they'll be there for her match at ringside. So obviously something's going to happen. I don't know what they're going to do there. But there's the storyline supposed to happen there. And then uh, they continue to progress the Kurt Angle text message storyline. They showed the three commentators talking. All of a sudden the Angle comes. So they're obviously trying to do. I don't know what they're doing. With the whole text message kind of scandal. Um, yeah. So... And immediately, as Corey Graves was about to explain it, they had Kalisto's music uh, come interrupt him. I don't know, the Kalisto's music is just terrible. Whatever happens to the Lucha, Lucha, that was actually kind of a cool theme. This theme music is just fucking trash. So, WWE cannot book baby faces to save their lives. They're continuing the stupid Enzo and Cass, few, uh, Enzo and Cass breakup. This is what it is. And, you know, them being attacked. They showed Big Cass attack with an ice pack on the back of his head. And all Enzo can say, oh, I have a match, I have a match, I have a match, I have a match. We need to wrestle. He's trying to get Big Cass to wrestle while the guy just looks like he got smashed over the head. In the back of the head with a fucking baseball bat. So, who the fuck would ever cheer Enzo Amore again? He is a bum now. He's a, he's a dick. I mean, they can't get baby faces over. He's so unlikable. Ever since he tried to bang Lana, you know, while wow, everyone knows she's married to Rusev. I mean, Enzo Amore is a dick. I mean, he's trying to get his tag team partner to still go out there after, even after he's got his ass kicked. The fucking Enzo is just coming. Oh, man, they make him look so bad. They can't book any faces. So I changed the channel during the Miz segment because I, I think he is a terrible as champion. Uh, people defend him. They say he's really good on promos. He cuts a good promos, but he's not a tough guy. and He ruins it. Whenever a guy loses them, they lose their credibility. That's why I think Apollo Crews lost all his credibility. You lose to the Miz, you're a, I mean, you're losing to a bitch. Miz is not a tough guy. He's a pussy. Uh, the guy is a coward. When people see him on TV, they think they can beat him up. So anyway, the segment, when I was watching it, Saw Maurice flip out. She threw something at Miz, and Ambrose was dressed up as a security or a camera guy, and he gave Miz the DDT. So, 
Um, unfortunately, I think Miz is probably beating Ambrose again at Battleground because I'd love having Miz as champ, so whatever. Um, there was a pretty decent uh, segment that happened. Uh, what they did was they had Enzo Amore um, look for a tag partner with Gallows and Anderson, so they introduced Big Show. They had him and uh, Big Show go back and forth for a bit. I thought Big Show was going to KO him, and then they... What they did was they basically had a match in which Big Show squashed Gallows and Anderson. So Gallows and Anderson are complete jobbers. Wouldn't uh, put my hopes up for a battle club anytime soon because they just got um, oh, fuck, completely bit choked by Big Show. So uh, not a good sign for them. Next is the Women's Championship match. Yeah, another terrible segment with the woman. That was just trash. You know, they've been showing Alexa Bliss a lot on the show, so I'm convinced she's their girl. She is their, she's going to be the future of the woman's division. It's, she's going to be their Trish Stratus. Um, you know, they've been really, they, she's been all over the show. She's all over the advertisements for Great Balls of Fire. So she comes out here, woman saw a match against Nia Jax, who is a foot taller. I mean, Nia is about 5'11", 6 feet tall, I don't know. Alexa's about four foot ten. Alexa is about ninety six pounds. Naya looks like two hundred and ten pounds. She's not two hundred and seventy two pounds like they say. No fucking way. But at least two, two ten, two fifteen, two twenty in that range. That bodysuit makes her look about forty pounds heavier. Um, so they have a match. They can't do much because of size difference. They play it up. Alexa tries to run. They have Mickey James and Dana Brooke come to ringside, and they were just terrible here. Dana Brooke is fucking trash. She is lost in the headlights. She is the worst woman on that roster by far. She is not ready. She is a deer in the headlights when you see her. So um, they cost, I mean, they slap Alexa, and it's a disqualification win. Just garbage. That was just, that was a horrible segment. And Nijax beat up Mickey and uh, Dana. And Dana, I mean, does not know what the fuck she's doing. That was just terrible. So now it's the main event. So this show, the first half of the show, or the first hour to two minute uh, hours was great. This looked like to be a great show. Because of the three-hour format, you had a lot of bad stuff in the second hour, and the show completely fell off a cliff and went from being a really good show to an okay show. Um, still, it was a decent show. You had a lot of good stuff. Just a three-hour show is just it's so painful to sit through. The, the second part, or the last third of the show, the third hour, mostly just was trashed. That completely sucked. That woman's part sucked and just ugh, fell off a cliff. But uh, before that, it was still it, it did enough to make it a decent show. Um, but, I mean, three hours. I mean, what are you going to do? So I'm saying this during the main event. So this is how I really feel. Uh, main event's still going on right now. I'm going to get my thoughts on it. So main event's over. Show's done. Um, again, started off really, really hot. It was going to be a great show. A lot of shit in the third hour. And it prevented it from being a great show to... Um, it dropped it down several notches when the show falls off a cliff. And it ended up being an okay show, a decent raw, a much better run. Most, the best raw, I mean, probably since the night after WrestleMania it was a good show. But, um, yeah, the, I really, if this was a two hour show, this would be a great show. But, um, it goes from being great to good to now just okay because of, you know, all the stuff you have in the third hour. So, um, I really, really wish the show was just two hours.